This is our story of how purchasing an old 1970s blue bellboy boat for $1,000 quickly turned into a once in a lifetime experience. My eldest son William spotted a little blue $1,000 boat on Facebook Marketplace. At the time, we were thousands of kilometres away from home. He wanted it as his first boat. Before we arrived home, the seller removed it off Marketplace and we assumed that it was sold. Three weeks later, I was scrolling through Marketplace and lo and behold, look what had reappeared. That little blue boat made in the 1970s. The seller's location was literally two minutes down the road and within no time at all, the boat had itself some new owners. Some extremely crazy ocean lovers, mind you. And with school holidays only a few days away, she was bound to have the cobwebs blown out of that old Yamaha motor. The motor being a little 40 horsepower, could travel 50 kilometers on a 20 liter jerry. I'd never seen boat economy like this before. The downside to the old girl was that the motor had this terrible squealing warning indicator coming through the control box of the motor. After playing around with the electrics, I found out it was caused by the fish finder, which had been wired up through the same wiring as the controls. Each time the siren went off, the fish finder would die, and it was an indicator that something wasn't quite right. I was able to quickly rewire the fish finder, and sure enough, the problem was solved. The boat surprisingly didn't leak any water into the hole. Because our boys enjoy fishing out on the open ocean, which is classed as sheltered waters, we'd need to upgrade a few things. And we quickly threw in a new marine radio, nav lights, some seat covers, cabin lights, and an auxiliary motor in case the old 1990s Yamaha let us down. All in all, the new additions cost more than the initial purchase, which was no surprise. All right, so enough about the boat. The second week of school holidays, something pretty magical took place. And it all started with just an ordinary day out fishing. Dad's fishing of a different type. I've got the I've got the uh, GoPro. I have a fascination with seeing the fish down in their habitat in the deeper water where I can't ordinarily dive. These guys are our sand flathead here in Tasmania. They're really good eating, but with a new size limit of 35 centimeters, it can be hard in our location to catch yourself a feed. Did you get another lizard? Oh, Hudson's on, is that big? This guy here is a gummy shark and they're fantastic eating. One of the boys managed to catch him, but unfortunately being undersized, he needed to go back in. This guy here, the nasty gurnard. In my opinion, one of the worst fish in the ocean. I've got some nasty spikes. You'll be throbbing in pain for hours. The fishing was slow, so we moved over to a reef, which would be a great opportunity for dad to film more fish. pretty tricky judging the depth with the camera when you're operating blind but if you get it right it's pretty cool capturing the fish and seeing their curiosity for the flashing red light on the camera 
The majority of the fish in this scene are colourful leather jacket, morwong, rock cod, and once again that nasty guy with the spikes, the gurnard. After a while, we drifted away from the reef and we were back out onto the sand. The boys did manage to catch a couple of good sized flathead. And then a butterfly gurnard arrived. These guys aren't quite as spiky as the common gurnard, but they've got massive wings that are really, really colourful. The fishing was still a bit slow, and while we were moving to our next spot to test out, we came across some humpback whales, which seemed to be feeding on all the krill that was in the area. And where is he now? Oh yeah. Is he a humpback or a southern right? There he is. Do you reckon if I just put my head in? Maybe. Louisa jumped in her swimmers with ambitions of swimming with the whale. With open blue water of 50 metres deep, I thought she was crazy. Oh no. With seals swimming around and the whale a fair way off in the distance, I didn't think it was going to happen. I've seen some of the mako sharks that have come out of the Bass Strait, not to mention great whites and a lot of other sharks. I don't think I can do it. It's a bit scary. I couldn't do it. I don't think. Maybe with me wetty, I probably could. But. He's just feeding on the krill. We can see lots of krill down under the boat. Is it that way? Yeah, sure. Balls is... You're you so know. close, aren't you? I know. You're very cold. If I was in my wetsuit, I feel like I would feel better. You'd be in. He's way over there. There he is. I wonder if I can swim if I put my head in just here. This was the bravest thing, or perhaps the silliest thing, I'd seen Louise ever do. Oh, whale there, mum here. This is it, mum. He's turning around to look at you. He's just flapped his tail. In the boat. Oh, she's in. She's in with the whale. What does the whale think? Come closer to the boat, Mum. It's all right. It's okay. Don't panic. You're okay. Is there any, any sharks? Have a, have a little look. Check your surroundings. I clearly wasn't making it any oh, easier for her. You're brave. Mum's brave as. Are you okay? Can you see him? Look, he's look. He's pretty close. Have a look. Have a peek over there. You gotta, you gotta level yourself out more. Easy to call the whale expert shots when you're sitting in the boat. Freezing. No. Go for a little water. swim around. Do a circle around the boat or something. You're so afraid of what could be in there, aren't you? I would be too. But you're in with the whale. <laughs> <laughs> you just won't let go of the boat. <laughs> oh no. It's just one big ocean, isn't it? It's scary. It's scary in deep water. He's just over there. He's minding his own business. There he is. He's pretty close still. I'd stay in. You might get a look at him. I was genuinely really proud of Louise. I know just how much guts it would take to get in that deep, cold water. And if she hadn't gone first, I don't think I would have jumped in myself. I'm too scared. You're braver than me. You love it too much. That's what happens when you're passionate about something. Oh, look, he's turned around. 
and when they suddenly came a little bit closer, I thought this could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. I had to jump in. Right there. Okay, Dad. I'm shaking at the knees. And off I went in my undies, ready for some action. It was 50 metres deep, I couldn't see a thing, and I could only think of the spooky things that could have seen me. Can't see him. I could certainly hear them, but I couldn't see them at this stage. I think they're afraid of me. They can sense my scaredness. Oh, they're coming closer. And then out of that deep blue water, something amazing appeared. Once I'd seen him, I did calm down a little bit, but this was one gigantic animal. And it was pretty daunting, not knowing what was going to happen and how he would respond to me. Oh, I spotted him for a bit. Where is he now? Oh. Oh, it's, it's a lot more less spooky when you actually see him. It's the unknown of where he is, where he's going to come up under you. And then he did just that. He sat down in the depths underneath, just observing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. began to sense that he meant me no harm and started rolling and appeared to me that he was playing. He still seemed to keep his distance and I was still a bit nervous to swim too far away from the boat and for whatever reason, I thought it might have been a good idea to speak some whale. Maybe the key is to speak whale. Yep, the key was to speak whale, and he came up almost immediately. Just looking at me. Oh, I get us. Hello. 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 This went on for a good ten or fifteen minutes and it was one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced. Oh, that's so cool.
Louise and the boys were getting a pretty cool experience as well. By the time I'd hopped out, there were now three whales surrounding the boat. Oh man, there's one there. Oh, there he is. Yes. <laughs> he's going to get us. There he is. No, nah, it's okay. He's just looking at us. What? No way. Just under me. Oh he my gosh. Straight under us. They're just looking at us. Oh. There he is. <laughs> oh. Luckily, all three of these are adults, and if you're out on the water and you see whales with calves, you're supposed to stay at least 300 metres distance with your boat. We were lucky enough in this instance that they came to us. Three of them. Beautiful. How good was that, family? <laughs> if you're lucky enough to see whales on your boat, make sure you monitor their behaviour. These guys were feeding, but they weren't overly active, they weren't breaching the water. These are wild animals, and in some instances, while breaching the water, they land on boats. So please keep it in mind, and keep yourself safe out there. If you've enjoyed our little adventure today, once again, make sure you hit that like button. Drop a comment below. I love reading all your comments. I try and get through as many as I can. On my last video, you guys gave me an overwhelming response. You just told me to keep going, keep making videos. There were literally over a thousand comments from all of you, and a lot of those comments were really well thought through, and some amazing things were said. From the bottom of my heart, I really do want to thank you all. And if you have enjoyed it today, keep up that good work and I'll see you guys on the next one.